Good evening, everyone. How are you doing? Uh, I'm Gamer Doc. I'm your host, and welcome to a very special episode of NWHL Open Ice. Special for a couple of reasons. One is that our last, this is our last episode before the Isabel Cup. After this weekend, there's no more hockey to watch. Hold on, I still have my glasses on. How am I going to be able to see if I don't have my glasses on? Uh, it's, 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 it's sad. We can all commiserate together. But the good news is, good news is, is that it's not our last episode of Open Ice. It's not. We will be running until the end of March. So we'll have at least three episodes after the cup to help uh, dissipate some of your NWHL withdrawal. We can do it together. We can commiserate together, everyone. Um, so don't worry. We'll, we'll still be around. So this was an excellent weekend of hockey. This was an excellent weekend of hockey. Unless you're a Buttes fan, then it was like a terrible weekend of hockey. But for everyone else, we had a really good time watching. Um, I mean, the story of the weekend was the whale. Like, let's be honest. The story of the weekend was the whale. They played some excellent hockey. Their passing was brilliant. They were puck hungry. They were just astonishing to watch. They looked night and day. I mean, like not to talk smack about, but they looked, they just had improved drastically since the last time we saw them. Um, Friday, they took down the higher seated Buttes five to three, and then they continued their stellar performance well into Sunday. Uh, going into the third period, the score was two to one against the Boston Pride, right? Two Boston, one whale. Going into the third period, uh, they they really just took it to him. Um, they ended up falling to the Giants. Final score five to one. But you know, can we just can we just spam those whale emotes? I don't care if you're a whale fan. I don't care who you are. Give us some whale emotes. Let's give them you know a, a salute to a solid ending this season. It was there. You go. There you go. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Give me those emotes. I love those emotes. <laughs> Love them. Uh, we had Elena Orlando on the show a couple weeks ago, and she really did an excellent job of not only representing uh, her her team, but um, representing every representing the league. Uh, and a little special my special place in my heart for Elena Orlando. So I don't know if you guys were around for it, but some fans made some um, art for her after the show. So uh, I made a special tribute to showcase her art. Um, so I'm just going to do a short tribute to Orlando and all whales out there. touching it's a really touching tribute <clears throat> it's not even the weirdest thing we've done on this show and don't act like it is <clears throat> so while that battle of david and goliath was going on uh there was also some exciting action going on whitecaps riveters were facing off in a goalie battle on either side they went into overtime with no score zero zero okay but who else who else but the MVP and goal scoring extraordinaire Allie Thunstrom put it away, put it away in overtime. It was and sending the Whitecaps to the Isabel Cup finals. I mean, I'm not going to say it's because she was on our show like three days before. But, you know, it's unsaid. <clears throat> uh, I had a great time watching hockey this weekend. I know all of you all did. It doesn't have to stop. This Friday is the Isabel Cup. 7.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Whitecaps face off against the Pride. Two hockey behemoths battling it out. There can only be one. One person left. Just one person. Can only be one person remaining. Um, 
luckily enough, on tonight's show, we have a member of each team. Of each team. We have Amanda Boulier. Oh my god, Amanda Boulier. And we've got Fratty, also known as Fratkin, but, you know, Fratty. Uh, number one and number two defenders in the league here in the virtual studio. Uh, both are award-winning defenders who plan on leading their teams to victory. And both are in the studio tonight. So, you guys ready for our guest? <clears throat> Up first. <laughs> Amanda Boulier. So, Boulier's illustrious career uh, began first at Westminster Prep and then the Connecticut Polar Bears. From there, she went on to captain her team at St. Lawrence. Um, so, please give a warm, open ice welcome to Whitecaps defender, all-star, and no stranger to the spotlight, Amanda Boulier. Amanda, welcome to the show. We're excited to have you on and to pick your brain. Um, so like I said beforehand, your career began uh, really at Westminster Prep for ice hockey and uh, captaining both the Westminster and Kinetic Polar Bears 19U team. Uh, you led your team to the 2010 and 2011 New England Championships. Have you always been this good at hockey? <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, I've been, you know, fortunate to be a part of some really good programs, but uh, a lot of the programs I've I've entered, we've we've had to build those, and um, you know, it's it's something that I, um, you know, take pride in, and um, something that I'll always be um, excited to have been a part of uh, the Westminster team. You know, the program was still kind of establishing itself, and um, you know, I came in with a really good class and some really good good leadership ahead of me that that helped us to to kind of get where where that program needed to be and had the potential to be. And it's, you know, still really strong today. So I, so I love to see that. Um, well, that's good that you're part of, of building something. You're no familiar to being the first in, uh, in a league or the first one around in a league. So it's, you've always had that kind of experience. So from there, you went to St. Lawrence, uh, absolutely racking up points despite not playing your junior year. You were medically redshirted during your junior year. You didn't play at all at all so what what was that like having to go from not playing to going back your senior year where you actually assisted the very first point in your senior year um, what was that gap year like for you yeah it was a it was a difficult transition for sure I had you know always been someone that was super active I'd played sports since I was three years old um, so it was the first time in my entire life that I you know had taken off more than a week um, so it was it was challenging um, I really wanted to do whatever I could to, to be a part of the team and travel with the team. So we had an equipment manager that had just left and I, I begged my coach to be the equipment manager. So uh, it was great to be, you know, a part of the team. I sharpened skates and did the team's laundry, and which, was, <laughs> which was very interesting and um, not the most pleasant smell. But I, you know, I, again, I loved being a part of the team and I, I got to travel with them and I uh, really feel like I had a role and was, uh, you know, a part of something. I actually really need to get my skates sharpened. So can yeah, I just like... I haven't done it in a few yes. years, but I'm sure I could figure something PO out. PO Box 716, if you don't mind. You know, yeah, you know. yeah, we'll see what we can <laughs> stir up there. Um, so you, when you joined the NWHL, you spent one year with the Whale uh, before signing on for the Whitecaps inaugural season. This is your second season with the Whitecaps. So for anyone who's either been to a Whitecaps game or watched a Whitecaps game, the fans are a little bit different. Like the stadium's always full and then there's people lining the glass all around. Uh, and it's just it's just so phenomenal to watch. It's so loud when you're watching a game. What like what makes the Whitecaps fans so special? Yeah, I mean, they are just absolutely incredible. I mean, not only do they, you know, fill our arena almost every game, but, you know, you could just feel the, the energy that they bring to each and every game. Um, I remember the, the very first time I took the ice uh, in a Whitecaps jersey and, you know, we had a sellout crowd. Uh, it was for warmups. And you know, <laughs> that, from what I've experienced, we've you know, never had more than 15 to 20 people in the stands for warmups, and it was essentially filled. Um, and I just remember having, having a full body chill. Uh, it was it was just an incredible experience, and they haven't haven't let up since that that very first time we took the ice. Wow, uh, I I can't imagine a sellout crowd for warm ups like when you're trying to like get your stretch on and like just like practice your shot against the glass, and then there's people just banging on the ice trying to get your autograph. Oh yeah, 
That's pretty amazing. <laughs> I, I I need to make it out to a Whitecaps game. Honestly, I just I need to make it out there uh, and watch you guys play next season. I'm I'm going it to. Should be on every hockey fan's bucket list. All right, maybe it's, we'll plan it's a like special you know, place. Yes, we'll plan like an away. All the away teams, people who don't live there, will just go for one day and like buy up all your seats. Um, I love it. <laughs> so you closed out the regular season uh, with some pretty wild numbers. Uh, you were number one in points overall for defenders. Uh, that's no small feat. I mean, like we've got Freddy coming up after Mary Jo Peltier was absolutely phenomenal this season. This season was just we had some absolute amazing defenders um but i want to talk about your play style for a second because it's like a little bit different um and why you're so dangerous i mean your skating is outstanding your puck handling is outstanding but your shot i want to talk about your shot because if you read (laughs) if you read articles about you or if you watch you play everyone just won't talk about your shot it's hard you get it off really quickly and it goes where it needs to go i mean you're you're five one, but you shoot like you're six one. So how did how did that develop? How did you get so good at shooting? Yeah. Well it's kind of interesting. I, you know, growing up and all throughout pretty much high school, I would say halfway into my career, I had a difficult time lifting the puck, if I'm being completely honest. <laughs> uh, I always relied on my skating and my hands and um I started working with a skills coach. Um, I play harder. His name is Mike Carter, and he is basically a magician. Um, he's uh, amazing. Um, really taught me how to shoot, and I pretty much can only credit him for that. Um, and again, that was about halfway through my high school career, and then um, you know from there, it's, it's it's certainly gotten better. But um, yeah, it's, it's just better. kind of funny. I, I never had a good shot, so it's it's um, yeah, kind of kind of nice to ha- to have that to rely on now. So what you're saying is that we don't have excuses for being bad at something we just need to keep working at it pretty much yeah you just need to find okay. the right coach too that can can help you solve some of those okay. issues that i once had uh so in addition to skate sharpening will you also teach me how to shoot absolutely my rec team needs me you know yeah women's yeah. d division <laughs> waits for no one no that's one that's right that's right Yes, you can definitely put that on the book. <laughs> All right, Google, Google, Google. So aside from having uh, a shot as good as yours and all those other things that I mentioned, um, you have this tenacity. You always, you seem to always be joining the rush. Uh, you don't hesitate to skate it up the ice. Um, I'm going to play this little clip of you. So where did this like tenacity come from? Where did this play style come from? Yeah, I just always wanted to be kind of in the play, you know, whatever that whatever that means. So I, I love having the puck on my stick. Uh, but not only that, I, like you said, I love joining the rush. Um, I definitely enjoyed offense a little bit more than defense, if I'm being perfectly honest. Uh, it's just it's just always been more fun to me. Um, but yeah, it's just it's always been a part of my game ever since I was probably eight years old. Um, I, you know, loved, you know, as a D, I could see the ice a little bit more. Um, so so I've pretty much been there my whole life, but um, I, I've just really enjoyed being able to, you know, rush the puck end to end or, um, you know, get up in the play. I just, I want to be a part of every every play that happens when I'm out there. Yeah, and, and, and you are. I mean, if you watch highlight videos, you are a part of all of it. And I think your, your assist number really reflects how often you are in the rush. Um, so you've had like almost 20, a little bit more than 24 hours to process the events of this weekend. Uh, that game was so entertaining. As someone who loves both the Rivs and the Whitecaps, like I was having a great time, but I can only imagine if you're like a super fan of either team, that would have been like super stressful because it was a no score game. And when it's a no score game, anything can happen at any time. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> and I think, you know, one thing about the Riveters is they will never, ever, ever be underestimated because they are so gritty and so dangerous. Um, but you guys held them to no to no score. What are some of the things that led to your success on Sunday? What are some of the things that contributed to you know shutting out that dangerous team? Yeah, yeah, I think we stayed pretty composed throughout the the game, um, and I think that's something we'll need to continue to do this weekend. Um, like you said, the Riveters are you know an incredibly gritty and hardworking team. Um, you can never count them out, um, and we knew that going in. We knew it was going to be a battle and 
um, you know, our game plan going in was to, to score early and often, and, and they didn't allow that. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we, 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 uh, we had to work through and, and kind of weather that storm. And uh, I think with some of our, you know, more experienced players and, um, of course, having Ali Fenstrom on our side is, is always going to be a bonus. Doesn't uh, hurt. Doesn't hurt. And No, never hurts. Uh, but I think, again, we just kind of stayed composed and we're confident going into overtime and uh, where we're able to, uh, you know, we didn't score on the power play initially, but we, we didn't panic and, and we just kind of kept chipping away. And um, Ali Fenstrom was yet again the hero. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this, the shutdown defense and the fantastic goaltending and the aggressive forecheck all also led to her opportunity. And that's so funny because if Allie was here, that would be her explanation, too. <laughs> She'd be like, well, I mean, everyone else contributed so wonderfully because she's just she's so humble after Thursday. Is, you know, when is. you see a player with her stats, you you have a perception of what they're going to be like. And then you hear them talk right. and you're like, what, where did you come yeah. from? Uh, right. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, it was, it was fantastic to watch. And I mean, like celebrate your victories, but you've, you know, I'm sure you guys are already getting back to work. Um, you've got four days to the Isabel cup, you know, everything that we've been waiting for, everyone's waiting all season for this game. Um, I'm never going to be the one who calls the white caps and underdogs. I don't think anyone's ever going to call you guys an underdogs, but going into this game, statistically, you are an underdog, um, you know, not, not by play style. Uh, so what are some keys to success that you guys are going to need to do to, you know, lock this game up against such a dominant pride team? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the pride have had an excellent season. I mean, they've, they've done everything right up until this point. Um, and you can tell they're, they're definitely hungry for the cup. Um, I think, you know, on our end, we've, we've definitely had an, an upward trend throughout the season. We started out a little rocky, but we've improved every game since then. Um, I think we're, we're peaking at the right time. A lot of our lines are clicking and our, uh, obviously Lev has been excellent for us back there. Um, I think we're going to need to be defensively very, very sound and, and smart. Um, the Pride are, are, are very good on the rush. Their transition game is, is elite. Um, so we're going to need to really, um, you know, crack down on that, not take um, crazy chances early on, but just kind of settle in a little bit. Um, but at the same time, I mean, we, we need to score goals to win. Um, so we need to capitalize on our chances and um, really just kind of bear down. I think we have the experience on our side. Uh, we obviously played in the Isabel Cup last year and we're fortunate enough to win in overtime. Um, but it's it, again, just like the game this past weekend, it's, it's going to be a battle and uh, we just have to kind of stick together and, and weather that storm. Wow. Spoken like a true defender who also likes to join the rush. <laughs> You're like, we're going to need to shut them down, but I might need to play some offense. I don't know. That's right. I might, I might need to go coast to coast. Uh, well, if it comes to that. Yeah, if it comes to that. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by. That is uh, all the time we have for this beginning part of our show. Uh, really, good luck this weekend. We're going to enjoy, you know, we're going to miss your spicy commentators. Um, but we're, you know, we're, we're all going to be watching. Um, and, and good luck. Is there any parting words for our fans here? Yeah, I just want to thank our fans. Our fans this year have been so incredible, so loyal to the NWHL, and we really can't thank you enough. Um, to the fans in Minnesota, we hope we'll have a wonderful watch party set up to you. Um, but thank you for being so supportive. Um, and we're hoping that we can get Cappy out to Boston. So I'm oh, thrilled about that. Oh, my God. I yeah, just wanted to send a little spoiler there. Um, and so we're, yeah, just just thank you very much to, to all fans throughout the NWHL, but especially the White Cap. Uh, well, thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening and ha good luck on Friday. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Yep, thanks for coming on. Cappy! Okay, you guys, Cappy's coming. Cappy's coming to Boston. Cappy's going to get a Boston accent, okay? Um, <laughs> I need to get over that so we can move on the rest of the show. Uh, what a human. Amanda Boulier, everyone. Um, All-star defender. She's certainly going to be integral to part of their win or victory this coming Friday. Uh, so I mentioned, you know, we were going to have two guests tonight. Uh, our second guest is Frate. Frate is the um, French word for her name, if you couldn't tell. Uh, but before we welcome her ne our next guest, I want to play the clip of the week because it is um, very timely to uh, what Boulier has been doing and what she's been contributing. Uh, 
so here it is, the clip of the week. Get the puck. Thunstrom plays it off the wall to herself. Another three on one for the Whitecaps. Curtis looks for the shot. And goal! Whitecaps win in overtime. Six minutes and 39 seconds in. Well, Allie Thunstrom was kept off the board all game, and she picks up the dirty goal back door. Was anyone else, like, super concerned for Thunstrom? Oops. Ooh, having a little bit of... Having a little bit of technical difficulties real quick. Don't worry about that, everyone. That was just... It worked really smoothly. I'm just going to need everyone to ignore that five seconds. Okay. Clip of the week, Thunstrom scores uh, the goal in overtime. Sounds familiar, right? Thunstrom game-winning goal. So was anyone else like super concerned for her safety when she was at the bottom of that pile? Because I was <laughs> I was watching that and you, you don't see her come up for like a minute. And, you know, knowing Thunstrom, having her on the show, I just, I feel connected to her and I feel like we can't. You know, she's a national treasure and we need to preserve them. Um, so enough of that. It's time to welcome our very, our second guest to the show. Uh, Defender of the Year. She's also, uh, she's played more on more NWHL teams than anyone else. And she's right here in our studio. Please welcome to the show, Kaylee Fratkin, forever to be named after this as Freddie. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Oh my gosh, so happy to have you. Um, I like, you know, it's it's easy. Nicknames are really easy for me to remember. Um, so the fact that you're like Fratty is really nice. My my college nickname was Migs, so I, I respect the nickname more than like anything else. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I want to get a little bit a little bit into your hockey origin story because um, you know I'm I'm like a gamer and origin stories are are a big thing. But you were born and raised in British Columbia uh, to a professional golfer and a runner. But you and both of your brothers play hockey. So my question is, does it take both of them to beat you? Or, like, do you have to tie one hand behind your back to beat both of your brothers? Like, how does that work? <laughs> Not at all. I actually think my brothers are far better hockey players than I am. So I'm actually at the bottom of the barrel, I would say, talent-wise, in the Fracken family. Uh, my dad is by far the best athlete amongst all of us, but um, yeah, no, my brothers are definitely better hockey players than I am. I, I, you know, I'm not going to believe it until I see it. Um, you know, we, we've, we've all seen you play, Freddie. Come on, come on now. Um, so you, you know, playing with boys was something that's, it's never been, you know, something new for you. You were the first girl to play on a uh, midget team, which is the Vancouver Northwest Giants. Uh, you helped them win a provincial championship, which I'm told is the Canadian version of states. Learning something. Um, yeah. You also did a bunch of cool stuff with Team Canada. You won some medals. So do you have like a whole room in your house devoted to like championship swag or like a, a wing? How does that How does that work? Well, I don't know about that, but um, I think between between the three of us, um, my parents, we, we always used to just keep our stuff in our rooms, kind of like any other kid. And then um, used to be kind of an overload in the bedroom. So then my parents decided to make the basement, um, turn it kind of into this like hockey shrine, I guess. So it's like my brother's college jersey, his pro jersey, and then kind of the rest of our stuff around too. So um yeah, you would go down there and people would be like, is this like, a, this is a weird hockey shrine <laughs> for your family. But uh, yeah, no, that's, that's kind of how it was in the Fracken household. So if, if you if you guys win on Friday, is that where the cup's going first to the, to the shrine? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Dems would get first. first oh, okay. The cup, but, uh, but what about your hockey shrine? To... Come on. Oh, well, yeah, the, the hockey shrine definitely gets a take on that. We've had her on the show, so, you know, I'll talk to her. I'll talk to you. Know. <laughs> um, all right. So you played after, you know, dominating in Canada, 
You played four years at BU, Boston University. Uh, you didn't miss a single game in your four years. You served as assistant captain. You were named at New England Division I All-Star and Hockey East first All-Star team. Um, my favorite stat of you, though, your junior year, you blocked 65 shots. Where is the worst place you've taken a shot? Um, probably right in the hand. I was kind of stupid and... Um, you know, normally you just throw your body in front of it and I turned my palm out right into my glove and I got it. Oh, right don't do that. My so that was a, that was a dumb move on my part, but, um, yeah, at, at BU kind of an incentive was you get these little terrier paws, um, and, and Doyle still to this day is blocking all these shots. I think she still thinks she's going to get these little terrier paws, <laughs> but, uh, that, that was our incentive to block at BU. So, um, yeah, rock racked up a couple of stickers that year. So that was fun. Was there space on your helmet anymore for that <laughs> i started to hang them in my locker okay. but uh, <laughs> nonetheless it's a cool bu tradition do so. you have any like pictures of that helmet i would love to see like a picture of that helmet it probably you can't oh, wow. even tell what what it is anymore it's just like covered just white stickers yeah, around just, a red helmet um, yeah, yeah just a white helmet you're getting it's fined like it's like when you grow up and you play, you, uh, you're you like the, at uh, Learn to Skate and they put the stickers on you for doing a good job. That's kind of what it feels like. Yeah, I, you know, I may know what being an adult in Learn to Skate <laughs> is, okay? I may, I may know, okay? All right, sorry. All right. Take it back. Just, you know, let's, I can do backwards swizzles now, so we're good. Okay. <laughs> so, gotta start somewhere. Gotta start, you gotta start somewhere, right? You know, give me a couple years. Maybe I'll be there for tryouts one day. You know, comically. Hey, there's always always free agent camp. You're always welcome. <laughs> if you can play, you can play. All right, cool, 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 cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna hold you to that. Um so aside from, you know, doing all that awesome stuff at BU, you studied broadcast journalism. Um how am I doing? It's okay. You're doing great. Okay. You're awesome. Cool, 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 yeah. cool. Uh, so, but you've been doing a lot more of that recently. You were in the booth for the Hockey East semifinals um recently. Moving forward, should we expect more of you on both sides of the ice? I mean, if the opportunity presents itself, maybe. Uh, yeah, studied it in school, and uh, hockey kind of just took over uh, when I graduated and didn't really have a chance to pursue it. A lot of my classmates were moving to South Dakota or North Dakota, um, kind of to the middle of nowhere to really um, – take a stab at it. And that's kind of really what you have to do in the industry mm. um, to kind of build your resume and, and make a, make a path for yourself. And hockey was still on the horizon. So maybe in the, uh, maybe in the near future, um, there could be potential in that, but uh, I've been thankful for a lot of really great opportunities. Um, you know, hockey East um, allowed me to do the, the championships, uh, which was amazing. And then did some stuff with bean pot for BU. So I've been, been given some really great opportunities and I'm really thankful for that. Yeah, I mean, we might know someone who broadcasts a show. <laughs> we might... Apparently, I think so. I'm on it, maybe. <laughs> we, so, I, I, we might. If you need talent, let me know. I also had to cut you off before when I asked how I was doing so you wouldn't like give me any constructive criticism live on air. Uh, but I, I, we would love to have you integrated more into this moving forward. Um, yeah, so, so. Good, good things talk, coming from Friday's career. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk offline. Uh, so you've played in all five seasons, um, starting with the Whale, then the Riveters. Uh, Chat corrected me. Someone else has now played with three teams. Uh, oh, and then you okay. returned to yeah. Boston. Um, but one of my favorite things is when you were with the Whale, that, this wasn't your first time, you know, donning the Pride jersey, because when you were with the Whale, you were loaned to the Pride for the Winter Classic. Um so what was it like, A, playing for a team that you never played on before, and then B, playing in the first outdoor women's professional hockey game ever? That was a really cool experience. Um, you know, it, it was a bizarre, unique situation where um, some of the players for the Pride uh, had obligations uh, with the U.S. national team, so they needed some players. Uh, and then it was kind of heard these rumblings that they were going to have um, the outdoor game at Gillette. And... Uh, they were like, you know, would you get like to get loaned to Boston uh, for the game? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. Why, why wouldn't I? Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it wasn't kind of awkward because it's like 
I've, I've played with and against a lot of the players that were playing for the pride uh, in college. And then um, a year out of college when we played in the, uh, the CWHL for the, for the Boston Blades. So a lot of my teammates were former teammates were playing for the pride. Um, and, but we, we really just hadn't, you know, talked or kept up during the season because you get so busy and then, you know, you're playing against each other and then there's all the, you know, aggressiveness that goes out on the ice. Oh yeah. You're, you know, you're smack talking one day and the next day you're like teammates. Um, <laughs> so it was, a, it was kind of a cool, um, it was really cool um, opportunity to, to get lent to that and playing it. Um, yeah. It, it was awesome. Uh, that is cool. I mean, you're like, should I play more hockey or can I play <laughs> less hockey? Give me that Jersey. I don't care what it says. Uh, speaking of the Riveters though, when you were on the Riveters, you played forward for them for a while. Uh, has that experience and, and spending a good time, you know, playing out, has that changed the way that you have become as a defender moving forward in your career? Yeah, uh, spending time uh, playing forward majority of the season with the Riveters that year, um, I learned a lot of myself as a player. I had a lot more responsibility, um, a different responsibility, I would say, in the D zone. And then uh, offensively, um, you know, you're you're really held accountable for more stuff in the offensive zone than I had ever really been used to um, because just playing on the back end just a little bit differently uh, or maybe different from what I was used to. So uh, there was a lot of learning curves from that. I hunkered down the third line um, with some <laughs> of my teammates. So uh, played a played a far different role than um, being a defenseman, but it, it was really cool. Uh, I played a little bit of forward to um, uh, when I was at BU. So any opportunity to just kind of not have to think so much, I guess, about my defensive game and be a little bit more offensive minded. Um, you know, I'm sure a lot of the offensive defensemen would be able to speak to it that they, uh, you know, any chance to go play for it is, is always something that you're pretty stoked about. And I mean, that experience is definitely reflected in your statistics. You've scored, you know, you scored a couple points, one or one or two. <laughs> um, wait, but Daisy on the Ice wants us to have Freddy's Fab Free Agency show. <laughs> we're going to we're going to need to make that happen for Daisy. <laughs> Because that's what happens when you're a suitcase of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so <clears throat> we haven't talked about this yet, and I, I feel remiss. You are the Defender of the Year. You are. Congra- huge congratulations. That's a huge honor. Um, I, I can't believe I haven't, you know, officially congratulated you until, like, 14 freckles into the show. Um, <laughs> huge honor. Very well deserved. Uh, anyone who's seen you play knows that you, you're an outstanding defender. Um, your regular season stats are ridiculously impressive, but your postseason stats are even more impressive. Let's talk about this for a second. Um, this weekend, you, you did some stuff. Freddie, you did some stuff. Um, so the first time you got on the board was assisting Dempsey. Um, you made it two to one which was still very close. I'm, I'm playing that video if you can't see it. Um, the, my favorite part of this video, though, is I don't know if it's you or your defense partner running over <laughs> oh, no. to celebrate. Me. It wasn't oh, you! <laughs> wait, wait, yeah, guys. And that, <laughs> one more. that clip was on Nesson, too, so that was great. One more time. One more time just for everybody watch because this is so – I'm so amazed <laughs> because you're such a good skater and then you're so excited and you're running over and you're like, ooh. Lost my footing. <laughs> Wait, it was on Nesson. That's amazing. Yeah, so it's happened a few times this year, subtly. So um, <laughs> yeah, that one was kind of kind of big time. So uh, yeah, I get really excited when we score, and I'm just really excited to get into that huddle. And uh, <laughs> you're like, I just want, I just want a hug. I just want a hug. I felt like, um, you know, uh, Happy Feet, the little penguin. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I felt like. You know, he's so excited, and then yeah. Like, if we were to make fun of me for falling, it would be mean because I'm not a very good skater. But you are like a ballerina on the ice. So the fact that you fell when there was no one around you makes it, like, very funny. Like, (laughs) but, okay. So so you guys went up two to one. uh, And then you went into the third period uh, against the Connecticut Whale uh, two to one. Um, And then you logged two more points you you personally not your team you logged two more points in the third 
period. So my question is, what were you, what did you tell yourself in that intermission? Like, what were you saying to yourself to just play like a beast that period? Um, I wasn't really saying anything to myself. It was uh, more collectively in the locker room um, as a group. I mean, we have, Dempsey's an amazing leader for our team. And I know she's been on, on your show. So, mm -hmm. so just probably talking to her, you can gather that. But um, I mean, our team overall, just the talk that we have in the locker room and the amount of camaraderie and chemistry that we have with this group, um, that really just, I guess, empowers me to want to play um, my best for my teammates. Um, and th this group is special. Like, it, it sounds kind of cheesy and corny, but like, it really is. Like, you look at kind of the person sitting next to you and you're just talking about the play and everyone wants it. Um, and everyone knows kind of what a special group we have this year and how um, successful we want to be. Um, so kind of in between those periods, that's, it's just really like the positive talk that we have in the locker room. And I just like, from a, from an upper standpoint, from our coaching staff to, um, some of the other leaders like Lexi and, and Dempst and, um, some of our veteran players just to push you to play better. Um, so very thankful for the group that, that I have this year to, to work with. I just, I really love that because every single pride player we've had on this show has talked about the camaraderie has talked about what goes on in the locker room has talked about the love it is amazing because i feel like a lot of times when you are a clear front runner you get a lot of haters because people just want to see you fall for no reason but with you guys everyone loves you so much because you know because of the things like that because you know you and dempsey and putinia everyone who's been on this show has been nothing but humble has been nothing but you know talking about their teammates not talking about themselves i you you guys are a, just such a amazing team to watch amazing team to grow um i just it's been a pleasure watching you this season it really has um wait but Thank hold on you. i need to play yeah 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 i need to play your very last goal um which is amazing because one of the things that really strikes me about your play is that if you were to throw like 99% of americans into your situation we would panic right like we would we would panic um but this last goal that you had in this game this last point i'm just going to play it let's just play it you're almost in the crease right you're almost in in your own crease and you fire it down and score you score an empty net goal but you were like almost in your own goalie's crease like you're touching la visa and you just fired it down that is just outstanding the coolness uh the, the the calm demeanor you had in that scenario the accuracy the power that was wild did you did you have what, what were you thinking when that puck just popped up you're like yeah i'm gonna, I'm gonna score i'm gonna put it away right now game's over well, we're on a penalty kill, and then I right. realized they pulled their goalie. And um, so when they had their six skaters, it's like a six-on-four situation. And quite honestly, like at that point, you're just like, we're, you know, we're up by two goals, and you're, you, you're you just like, well, we're on penalty kill. So And they pulled the goalie. So best scenario is you just like rip it down the ice. And the puck popped loose after, and I was like, got it. And it, I like took a quick little look before I just, you know, chucked down the ice and I was like wait a second I, I literally have a clear lane because you can throw it right on that so I was like okay here goes nothing and then it started to trickle and like the ice it, the ice in the rink was like really soft that day because it was so hot and warrior and I was like oh my luck is probably gonna like get right to the goal line and then just like trickle off to the side but um it went right in and I mean at that point it was just uh kind of icing on the cake to everything else that went on that day yeah, I mean, it's just that it was just the fact there were literally ten bodies around you, and you're just like, nah, I'm good. Well, people were yard sailing. I mean, that was the best thing. But like, if you see like our teammates, like it's unreal. Like you had Mary Parker like yard sailing and Wolf Filer. Like everyone's <laughs> just like laying their bodies, and then I just came in and scooped up the puck. But I was like, hey, thanks teammates for doing all the work. Yeah, hey, yeah, thanks um, for setting me up. Real sweet, real cool. That's what you're used to doing, though. You know, it's not you know you're used to setting everyone else up and making them look pretty. So it's nice they returned the favor right <laughs> um so you've played on three teams um you know you've arguably though this has been the most successful of your tenures um the pride have been favorites for the isabel cup since pretty early on into the season uh this here it is you know this friday you're at home 
you're playing against the Whitecaps. Uh, what are the, some of the things that are going through your head, you know, leading up to this game? What are some things that you're really focusing on uh, leading up to, you know, the Isabel Cup? Yeah, um, I mean, this is what we this is what we uh, started, you know, back in September uh, when our team team came together, um, and then last year lost first round in playoffs too. So, you know, we still snake bitten or butt hurt about that um, before <laughs> the season started. And then, um, you know, season starts and that's like your main focus. And, you know, you play these teams because there's only five teams in the league. You play a team so many times and then you, you quickest turnaround from when season ends to when playoffs start. And you're like, wow, it's really only two games to make this happen. Um, but you got to win the first one. And so thankfully we did that. And then you come down the second one and we're playing Minnesota and we've only played them, you know, four times this year. Um, and they have an amazing team um, with some like really lethal hockey players mm-hmm. that are unreal hockey players. So um, I think for us, I think the biggest focus is we can only really focus on ourselves at this point um, just with, you know, like four days or something before our next game. So um, for us, it's just coming out and playing a good sound hockey game um, and getting out on, on top first. Um, and then, you know, doing all the stuff that we've done up until now to get us here. Like winning. Um, having confidence. Yeah, like winning. <laughs> it's kind of the biggest thing. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I, I think we're confident in, in what we, we can do and we know our abilities. So, um, you know, we just got to come out and work hard because we're, we're really only as good as our work ethic. And I'm sure Demps has said that probably 70 times when she was on this uh, on this show is uh, talking about work ethic and heart. And that really is the base core of our team. So. Um, I'm super excited. I've never been in an Isabel Cup final. Um, I've lost in the first round every single ooh, year. So um, I sure know what it's like to lose every <laughs> year. So I really, really don't want to lose this year. But um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited. We're excited. We're excited to watch. I mean, we're pretty excited to watch. Uh, so switching gears a little bit, you were the first player to sign on for this fifth season of the NWHL. Um, you have always been about growing the game. Uh, if you read statements from you, if you read articles about you, at the end of the day, what you want is for the sport to be successful, right? That is like, that is, I know I'm putting words into your mouth, but I did some really okay. solid internet yeah. stalking of you. So I feel like <laughs> I know you. Um, you did your homework. I did my homework. So in, in your mind, like, what are some of the next, what are some of the, the things you're excited for in the NWHL's future? What are some of the next steps to growing the game? Yeah, I'm really excited with um, some of the, the big deals that have happened this year. So with the 50-50 revenue split between amongst the PA and the, in, mm-hmm. um, in the league, um, which is huge. This Twitch, um, shout out to Twitch for, for making this happen. But, um, you know, this has been, as you know, and, and all you Twitch viewers know out there how, um, how awesome this has been for the league. Um, and so the continued growth through that, um, continued growth with sponsorship, um, you know, potential individual ownership, expansion of teams into different markets. Um, those are all really exciting th- things that are going to help really grow this. Um, and, um, you know, as, as that grows and uh, more people join on and, and want to partner with this league in a monetary way, you know, 50% of that money is going to the players and helping the, the salary of the players grow. So um, I'd love to see all of that continue to build and grow. And, um, you know, that that's where everything, that's where the magic happens and everything else, I, <laughs> you know, falls, falls into place. You're so, so, so that 50, 50 sponsorship thing is something that, you know, a lot of people mentioned, but we, we don't really talk about a lot because that's huge, right? Like that doesn't exist in any other league. The fact that like any new sponsorship deal or whatever is happening, you guys get 50% of that cut. The thing I've always loved about the NWHL and the thing I've always loved about supporting the NWHL is that yes, it's a business, but it's, it's about women's hockey. It's about growing the game. It's about supporting the players. It's about, you know, trying to find the best scenario for everyone um and and speaking of that um during my internet stalking that that chat is telling me to call journalism um i noticed that you retweeted this recent article about danny ryland not once but twice um so for those of you who haven't seen it check out uh fratty's twitter um but there an article was was posted about danny ryland um and about what she did to create this league. Um, 
And, you know, a couple of us ugly cried about it. But um, can you just tell me, shout out to Danny for doing everything she's done. But what was your impression of this article? What were some takeaways that you learned? Yeah, the the article was was really well written. Um, I was actually fortunate enough to talk to Christina Rutherford, um, who wrote the article. I talked to her for a really long time um in in kind of got my my take on on you know the league and, and Danny and and uh, so on and so forth and the, the growth of the sport and so um I thought what was so amazing about it is just the fact that um if you weren't someone that knew kind of anything about the state of women's hockey or what was going on at the women's you know pro level or the women's game you could read that article and really get a grasp into what is going on kind of an inside lens into to the sport um, and the state of the sport and Danny Ryland herself, um, you know, her mission and just things about her that, you know, I never knew um, at all. And so it was really cool to, to get insight into that and just learn more about her, um, more about what she wants to do with this league and, and why she started it and what the mission is and, and how she's trying to help grow the game. Um, so that's, that was really cool. And I was thankful enough um, to talk to Christina Rutherford about that. And she, she, made a great piece and it was it was awesome so if you haven't read it definitely take a read um it was great and they can find it on your twitter right what is your yeah do you want to just shout out your twitter real quick for us tell us where we can find uh, sh- shameless shameless plug uh it's uh, not shameless 13. if i prompt it there you go bracket 13 what what one more time Fratkin 13. Fratkin 13. <laughs> love it. Love it. Unlucky number 13. <laughs> lucky for every, or unlucky for everyone else but you. Um, I was going to make you speak in French on this show, but we're running out of time. Uh, t- tu parles français? Oui, je parle français. <laughs> oh, come on. That's like the muzzy response. <laughs> Did you did, did anyone else do you remember Muzzy the, the 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 amorphous blob that like hairy blob that looked like Sully that taught everyone French? Was that not was that not a thing? I mean, I guess you grew up in Canada, so it was probably a little I bit did. different. Um, it was a little bit different, but do you ever think in French? No, you know what I used to um, when I was younger because all of my schooling, like French immersion, everything was in French uh, in elementary and pretty well high school. And um, no one in my family spoke French. So I, a wild idea that my parents wanted to put me in French immersion <laughs> school when no one else in my family spoke French. She'll teach us. Um, it's fine. She'll teach us. <laughs> yeah, she'll teach us. And uh, so I don't know. My parents did that. And then uh, I did these like weird French speaking competitions when I was a kid. So I kind of, that's when I like kind of thought in French but so we're um, already like 20 minutes over showtime so there's no point I mean we could just keep going <laughs> what talk to me about French speaking competitions please please just just a little just a little yeah, bit yeah, more about that I need more <laughs> I was like the fifth grade and or grade five is really what I want to say but to please all the American viewers out there it's the fifth grade um and you there's like a it's like kind of a like bonus points in school if you did it and I like speaking to people. I liked public speaking. As you can tell, I like to talk. And so there was an opportunity to basically speak in French. <laughs> and like you had to write out this entire kind of speech um, about a particular topic. And I don't know, I picked something and um, <laughs> I went I went actually really far in the French speaking competition. So um, yeah, it's fun fact freddie always been a contender since <laughs> fifth grade speaking competitions you heard it here first on open <laughs> eyes we do journalism <laughs> um freddie i feel like we could have you on for like the next hour or so but you know we've gone 21 minutes over our time because you're so interesting um <laughs> thank you so much for sharing your wonderful personality um onto the show congratulations again on defender of the year um any parting words for us 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 non-french speaking champions who aren't defender of the year (laughs) i guess i would just say that um you know thank you for having me on um this has been awesome and thanks to all the um you know supporters and viewers uh through twitch and the nwhl fans uh, you know definitely the boston fans in particular um but 
obviously any other NWHL fan out there. You guys are a huge part of the reason why we're even here today and having this conversation. Um, very pumped about the Isabel Cup final. If you haven't gotten tickets, please get tickets. Um, it should be a wild atmosphere at Warrior. So I'm pumped about it. And uh, thank you again for having me. Yeah, War- Warrior Stadium is going to be wild. It's 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 going to be wild. Yeah, that atmosphere, it's insane. It's, it's going to be fun. wild. And now I, apparently we have a mascot now, so we didn't even know about that. You guys um, have a mascot. We now have a mascot. Don't know his name. I mean, he's definitely not as cool as Cappy, probably. But um, yeah, we have a mascot. <laughs> oh my god! If you just announced your mascot on air live right now, you're going to get in so much <laughs> trouble. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. Uh, Wait, yeah, but, but I should. I bite. I bite my tongue now. <laughs> Cappy's coming too, though. Is there going to be any like mascot on mascot like shooting competitions or down. something? Oh my god. That's my suggestion next year for, for All-Star. They should have all the mascots into town like they do for the NHL All-Star. 100%. 100%. They need to do like their own skills comp. Okay, Freddie, I need you to use your connections to get me. I, I want to wear the I want to wear the mascot suit. Okay. I want to wear the mascot good. suit. <laughs> okay, well, um, thank you so much for coming on this show. You're, you're amazing as a human. Um, best of luck this weekend. Uh, you don't need it. You've got, you know, raw skill, but, um, have a wonderful, wonderful evening and, uh, rest up for Friday. Thank you. Thanks. Yep. Appreciate it. We'll see you around. Alrighty. Bye. Friday, everyone. Friday. God, I, the, my, my favorite part of this show is, is getting to know these women more and just, learning about the personality behind this caliber of athlete i don't know if maybe like espn has ruined my perception of the pros but like every single one of these people every single one of these athletes is like a stellar human and it's it's just amazing it's just amazing i am so thankful to be broadcasting this show i am so i'm just so happy to be doing this it's so much fun. I'm having a great time. I hope you guys are having a good time too. Um, but that is it for the show. This Friday, Isabel Cup, 7-15. It is the last game of the season, but it is not the end of NAWHL action. Next Monday, we will be right here, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, giving you this content, journalism, Um and, you know, I'm happy to be doing that. Uh, we'll see you all in chat on Friday. Thank you all so much for stopping by. Uh, this is, it's just truly a pleasure to be doing this for all of you. Have a happy and healthy week. We hope you enjoyed the show. By tuning in every week and engaging, you're directly supporting the league. Do you want another easy and free way to show your love? Amazon Prime customers have access to one free Twitch subscription a month. First things first, if you haven't already made a Twitch account, Click the sign up button, which should be in the top right corner of your screen if you're on a computer. What a great show. Oh, you're, you're finished? Once you have a Twitch account, head over to twitchprime.com and follow the instructions to link your Amazon account to your Twitch account. Sounds complicated, but it's not. Once you've done that, click the subscribe button right here. And make sure you scroll down to subscribe for free. Done! Now you've accessed exclusive Twitch emotes and some other fun stuff. Pro tip, the subscription doesn't auto-renew, so make sure you do it every month. That's it. Thanks for watching. Go sports!